Welcome. Welcome to our audience, whoever is out there today, and thanks for joining us to All Aboard the Hype Train. We have a lot of topics right now that are flying around in this world that people are pumped to hear about, and um, we're going to cover a few of those today. Some of them. Just a few. <clears throat> My name is Lisa. I head up brand and community at Dual. I've just come from nine years of Lululemon, so I'm a little bit new here, but I am also leading the Brand Builders Collective, which is a group of really authentic forward thinking brands who are keen to grow through passionate advocates of communities. And I think we've got a few of those out here in the audience today. Should be cool, yeah. Um, I, my name is Paul Archer. I'm uh, one of the founders of Jewel. Um, I, I have the CEO role, um, but I also work with a lot of brands, helping them grow through uh, the power of their people, their advocates and their communities and how they can grow through that and, and everything that that sort of falls into. Um, and so hopefully, have a have a position here which would be able to help people i think and today <laughs> we're talking a little bit about something different that's still going to affect brands out there and people in general who are really into this kind of space maybe not into it and want to learn more so before we get into that what are we not going to be covering here today paul well what we're not going to do <laughs> is we're not going to do any investment advice not because it's that lame thing is i don't take this as investment advice it's more on the lines of i haven't got a clue um about how to do it. i'm pretty sure no one does which is the, the oh, added yeah. benefit for it and also exactly what is the newest hypiest um nft that's about to drop i'm not going to talk about anything like that um, because actually it's like a fire hose. We can we can get lost. We're going to try and work on this from first principles, understand it from a broadest kind of perspective, and narrow in and understand how how brands can use this and be more practical about it with a with an eye to the now, but a, but an eye to the next couple of years as well. <clears throat> Love that. So for our audience today, I am plugged in right here. If you're putting some questions in that Q&A box right at the bottom of your screen, I'll be able to see them. So feel free to, free to ask questions as we go along and I'll kind of address them as we hit across a few of the topics. Um, so yeah, just excited to hear from everyone who's out there today. And Paul, excited to hear from you. So um, I am not an expert in this space. I grew brands really through grassroots community. <laughs> and now we have landed on a whole other different way to build communities and do a lot, lot of other things out there. Um, where did your interest spark from around this area? All right. So I think, first of all, the, the principles are the same, right? It's still a community. It doesn't matter whether they live in a Lululemon store or they live um, online, they live in a Discord community or they live on Instagram. Yeah, people are people and their love and their passion kind of kind of runs through that. So um, I sort of first dipped my toe into this, I think, I think probably bought, bought my first bit of Bitcoin in 2016. And um, I wrote a white paper for a business in the kind of tradable space in 2017, uh, which is pretty terrible, actually, the, the white that I've read it subsequently, it was, it was very prescient in terms of what it said with the future be going, but it was really, really terribly done and, and full of grammatical and spelling errors as well to boot. So um, I've been playing around in this, kind of moved out of it for a bit, moved back into it. Um, and sort of my areas of interest in this is, is particularly fired up at the moment around the way that brands are able to, to use this and, and actually the way that things are kind of expanding out into the um, into the, inf the infrastructure starting to be built there so that this space then becomes something that everyone can get stuck into. Mm, love that. I think that is where, you know, where we're thinking of right now is how is this actually going to affect us in the future and our brands. I think before we get more into that, that's super exciting. <laughs> Let's go over a few main concepts to really demystify <laughs> all of these words that you're hearing on socials, on the news, in your friend groups, with colleagues. Let's start with Bitcoin. I feel like that's <laughs> a good place to start. Um, tell me more about this whole concept of Bitcoin. Right. So <clears throat> Bitcoin's quite an interesting story because it, it came out as a reaction to the 2008 crash you know like yes. when basically if you imagine it or so much of our money is centralized in a very small number of institutions and people and they prove themselves to be wholly untrustworthy mm. um and basically the crash happened so many people lost their jobs so much money was lost and not a single person you know one person went to jail i think it was uh, and, and you know so, so this idea of a very centralized 
um, financial ecosystem was something that you know actually obviously didn't make sense for a lot of people and and so the the idea of building out a digital currency that was decentralized became much more of a thing and this is when the first white paper was published um, on Bitcoin um, and so that was kind of how it came about um, and and what it what it is is it it's a currency it's a it's a way that you can can buy and trade goods um, online digitally without it having a centralized bank or central bank or organization to verify that each transaction happens. Um, now to to delve into why that's important it, and actually how this kind of works and why we're all all talking about that and that was the, the granddaddy of making it all happen. Yeah. Um, you have. Uh, Basically, it was built on this technological blockchain. Mm. Um, and the problem is, if I were to give you a digital currency, a file, for example, if I send you a Word document, you can copy that and you can yeah. copy it and paste it, you know, infinite numbers of time. So there's no, it's not finite, it's not limited. And it's very hard to say, well, actually, I gave you that, but now you've copied it and now you've got it and I've got it. It gets very confusing, which is why there hasn't been a digital currency that hasn't been centralized by one entity to verify it. PayPal or a bank when you do the transaction and things like that. Um, and so what the blockchain technology is, is it's a way to verify ownership of digital assets. And we'll, we'll, we'll go into that in a lot more detail why that matters in a bit, but it's a way, if it, that Word document example there, like I can verify that yes, Lisa does own this Word doc, one, two, three, four, um, and Paul doesn't. And the blockchain does that because it's actually a decentralized community powered computing system that just verifies this think of them as it's called a it's what's called a, di a distributed ledger yes. and so thousands of people each hold a ledger that records that lisa holds that and paul does not and what this means is if for example i would say well actually no i i do hold that and lisa doesn't um and i can change it on mine and i can pr pr show to people that yeah no i i own this asset you know say there's a thousand other people there's a thousand people doing it 999 other people say actually that's not true my ledger right. says Lisa owns this, not Paul. And okay, so let's pause there. Okay. <laughs> that was a lot. I'm gonna bring it back to a little bit of an analogy. Um, mm. If we're in a football, football game, for example, and Paul, you and I are playing team Paul, team Lisa, <laughs> Lisa scores. And it, it's like, from what you're saying, you're giving a little like, a little kind of thing to the audience member to say who actually scored there. Did Paul score? Did Lisa score? And if thousand members of the audience said, yeah, Lisa scored, it is now in that ledger. And it is like, that's like Bible. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great analogy. I think the, the bit that comes first is, you know, previously there was a referee that said yes. Lisa scored. Yes. Um, and now you remove the referee. Instead, you have a thousand people that will verify it or not verify it as the case may be. And basically it's a lot easier to corrupt one referee than it is to corrupt a thousand people. Right. And that's the principle of this. It means it's, um, it, it's, it's much safer. It's, it's almost always gonna be up because actually it's more, far more than a thousand. So if, if one, um, one computer like gets flooded or something like that, or it gets hacked, actually there are thousands more that will verify it. That means that it's really, really hard, if not impossible to break. Yeah, that's what comes up in my mind. I'm thinking, okay, am I going to get hacked? I have these assets online. What does that look like in that space? But I think that that blockchain is is exactly trying to decentralize the whole thing so that that doesn't happen. Well, they, I mean, they could still steal it from your wallet, but if they could they hack could into still. yours. But yeah, but basically, the it's very hard to sort of disrupt that idea of the ownership of it. Okay. Um, and so that's the principle. Bitcoin is purely a currency. There is nothing else in it other than a, a, a sort of movement of value. Yeah. Um, and that value had nothing initially. The first currency, I think, was a pizza. It was bought for, for about yeah. three bitcoins. Um, and, you know, people giving away. It was like, oh, this is quite fun. And, and then the value people then started to see, well, this has a bit of a transactional value. I actually would give you dollars for your bitcoins. And, and then the more it, it basically, the more people got into it, the larger the network became, the more unbreakable it became, and then also the more valuable it became. And so mm -hmm. now it has reached a point where it is verified and understood as a move as a transaction of, of value by pretty much the whole world in the same way that pounds and dollars are, um, which means now it is a, a legitimate kind of currency in that sense as well. And we're at that stage right now in this moment of time. This is not just like something that's happening. This is right now. 
yeah, I mean, it's happened happened quite a few years ago, and, um, but now we're now we're at the stage of actually that technology and this idea of digital currencies and, yeah. and what does that mean has now evolved into loads of other things. And and actually, it's not just a currency; it can be a token, it can be a file, it can be an asset. Loads of different things, which I'm sure we're going to jump into. Yes, um, I yeah, <laughs> I think that's where my my head is going right now. So NFTs, non fungible tokens. Tell me more. Where's this all coming from? And now it's not just Bitcoins. NFTs are a thing. I can own them. I can create them. I can design them. You, I mean, you can do pretty much anything you want with them, which is what makes them so exciting. Um, one thing that's actually quite interesting about the, the currency analogy we were talking about earlier is um, for the NFTs, for, for me, is where it gets very exciting for brands and right. for multiple reasons. But actually, brands were probably or well, some of the earliest digital currencies anyway if you think about mm. your amex points or your yeah. uh, airline points they were centralized verified by amex or your airline but actually you had a currency that you would trade so you'd have a, a set of points you would have you'd be able to trade them for a flight or you maybe even be able to cash them in or you could trade them in for amex points it became a sort of a tradable currency and it's something which most people are quite familiar with um and actually digital digital currencies on the blockchain are, are no different um, but what's uh, and, and the thing is, if I gave you 100 points, if I give yeah. you 100 like Amex points, um, you wouldn't care which 100 I've got in the same way that if I give you a fiver, you don't care about whether it's this fiver or that fiver or that fiver. They are it's the, the same. same value. Yeah, they yeah. can affect they can They're fungible. You would not care that happens. So that's where that that word non fungible comes in, right. because if, for example, I had a maybe a fiver and I wrote something like a number on it and then another fiver, I wrote another number on it. You would say, I want the fiver with number two written on it. That suddenly isn't the same. Not all fivers are then the same, which means that they become non-fungible. And that's the basic concept around this. So it, but it, it goes a lot more than that. That's like the, 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 the way that the word comes about. But I think that what makes it um, interesting is it's a token. It's almost a file um, in, in, in the way that the analogy we used with that word file earlier. But um, it can do so much more. And what's amazing about a, a token uh, or an NF NFT token is that you can um, write a smart contract on it. And that mm -hmm. smart contract could probably do pretty much anything you can come up with. Um, loads of different variables of it. Um, and that, that's, that file, that, that token then is you know, provable that you own it. Provable that it's you know, one of one or one of 500. Um, like a receipt. <clears throat> of some sort yeah yeah just like a receipt um a digital receipt right. um that is held on this blockchain um <clears throat> and they are built on another blockchain the, the the biggest of which is ethereum which is if you think about bitcoin as a blockchain for currencies uh, ethereum is a bit is a is a blockchain for processing computer processing and so it can execute um like uh, commands and, and and things like that and, and actually become the processor so on this basically you can then create a token which is a digital asset. It is one of one, and you can then install, instill some sort of value or some sort of asset, some sort of uniqueness to that. So maybe it's an image, maybe it's a, uh, it's a file, maybe it's, a, it, it's a, the way that it plugs into something, it executes in a certain way, and it then becomes tradable. We've got a question okay. here right. about, <laughs> about <clears throat> the monkeys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, someone in our audience, I have as well, have seen these monkeys, they're on socials, celebrities are own these, this is an NFT, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and probably what we talk about is the, the Bored Apes Yacht Club, yeah. uh, which is the, the monkeys, <laughs> which uh, is, yeah, like one of the most popular ones that came out. The originators, the, the OGs were the CryptoPunks. Um, which basically on this very limited file that was available on, mm -hmm. on the tokens when they first came out, they were able to code using really old school bitmap style. Um, and the, the, the resolution is so low, but they could actually put it onto this tiny file, which is very, very small amounts of, of memory on it, um, an image um, of a person's face. And then they did some smart things, playing around with what it could do so that you know, there was a, a limited number of them and each one would have a slightly different variable. One was wearing glasses, one would have a yeah. different pound or, or, or whatever I've seen them was. all stylized in many different, many different ways. Well, that's an evolution of it. The original yeah. one, the cri CryptoPunks, just were cut coded onto it and, and they, were, they were the first ones. And, and then actually more and more recently, there's ones coming out in loads of different areas. And one of the most popular is the Bored Apes Yacht Club, which, are, right, which, is, which is the images of a monkey and, yeah. and they're unique, but they can also then be 
played with uh, played with and tailored and you basically you own that asset so it's like a it's like Banksy doing a piece of art mm. and then you buy that Banksy but you own that Banksy so if you want to deface it and if you wanted to you could <laughs> you you would do that and then it would then take another evolution of it and it's so it's a really interesting what's been amazing about the space is that people are just innovating it in a way that people innovate on art, art as in so many different ways but mm. with digital art they're looking at different ways they can code in smart things they can put pieces into the contract that will engage with certain ways and then at the, at the moment we're really early in the in the stages of it like so much has been done but still so much is yet to be done people are experimenting and seeing where it'll end up okay and what about with um this concept of like a secondary market for things out there ah uh, yes and that sounds like a really big opportunity and has a lot of possibilities for um anyone who enters this space yeah so just to so if you think about the nfts um or any kind of tokens yeah. they, they, they sit there and there are multiple blockchains or less there's a lot of different variants of all these various examples but um you know, we talked about art as an example, one of one or a limited number, you're doing it for art's sake, you know, mm. because it's cool. Um, and it's interesting and it is quite cool and it is quite interesting. And then other people think so. And so it becomes in society quite cool and interesting and therefore the value increases. increases. Um, now, because it's a finite, a non-fungible item that is verified that you own it, you can then also release limited numbers of items. It could be one of one or it could be one of 500. So okay. in the same way that... If anyone remembers collecting anything when they were kids or, or, or now, it doesn't matter whether it's um, cards, pogs, Magic the Gathering, baseball cards, like collectibles as, a, um, as, a, as, a, as an asset, you know that if you've got a limited one that other people want, you can then sell that on. And yeah. people will actually spend money to get the Charizard, which is the one that I always wanted at school but never had. I just had you know, Squirtle, which is lame. <laughs> um, so basically, you, you've got that one. And because other people want it, it has, a, it has an inherent value, even though it is a digital asset, which previously no one ever thought would have value in this way, because I can prove that I own the Charizard or whatever the case is, then I can sell it on. Yes. And other people will then say, well, if you transfer that token to my wallet, which is where you will hold your, your sort of items in there, I will give you this amount of money for it. And that money could be a currency. Generally, it's it's in if you're on the Ethereum blockchain, you're transferring it ETH to, to buy it. But you know, that that's a proxy for dollars, Bitcoin, everything like that. So if if I've got something that you want, you can buy it off me. Yeah. Um, which suddenly has a secondary value in this, which means that it actually has real value because you are speculating that it will do. But you may not even want it. You may just think that whatever I'm willing to sell it for is slightly lower than someone else would be willing to sell it for. So you so, will buy it from me and then flog it onto someone else, which then further increases the value of it. And the yeah. secondary market of other people buying it then becomes the thing that makes these, these assets actually valuable. Like if I wanted to trade in my Squirtle card for your... Char obviously we'd never do that <laughs> obviously we'd never do that but yeah go on and i secretly know that that charizard is worth something like snorlax and i know that snorlax mm. really wants the charizard i'm like Strong. it's kind of like a little under the table deal but really it's like secondary market exactly exactly yeah. you can trade and you can move it um and so we're talking about the these assets we talk about being art to talk about it being kind of collectibles um but the thing is that they are a smart contract right so you could just like you can write anything into a contract like yeah. we could write a contract to do something or to work or do it with a customer or mm. whatever it is um you can do that within these tokens and then what makes that interesting is that then has another area of value onto it and so for particularly for brands where this is this is interesting is you can bake into that contract that for every single time that this sells again i will take five percent of the proceeds and you can automatically do that because it's coded it's just in in ones and noughts it's on there which means that you can't break that and it's verified by thousands of other people doing it so actually every time i trade charizard the original creator can get 5% of it or whatever the, the percentage is. So suddenly, not only do you have this secondary market for these things that never had any value, but also you've got an ability for the creators to okay. earn consist consistently. Got it. 
Um, and that could be a great way for artists to earn, um, earn money for what they do, and what they sell, particularly yeah. as they're, because if you imagine you sell something for a thousand dollars at your student art fair, but then you become, you know, Damien Hurst selling it for, for you know, millions, actually you don't get to see that that thing then goes for millions. But now if your credibility and your stock increases, you can still take 5% of all the transactions. And so you've yes. got an evergreen way of earning. And again, it's just ripping up the rule book as to how people can earn um, it with their creations with, as a creator, be that art or you're dropping a collectible or in the case of brands where this then gets interesting. And, and obviously what we, we, we play in that area we play in is you can then actually earn from the secondhand sort of sale of it. And yeah. it's almost like BMW selling a car up front but they've got no motivation to make sure that that car runs for a long time. You know, because you buy it, you sell it to the person like the who buys it. initial sale. Done. But actually, if they know they want this to be running for the next 30 years, because they get a cut of every single time they it changes hands and cars on average change hands like five, six, seven times in some cases, actually you can have another supplementary income. Yeah. And so there's tons of examples of where this will then like really change the way that people think about commerce and the way that they think about brand building. In the acting world, we call it residuals. When you shoot something and then you get paid more and more, the more it's used. I have an embarrassing story, which I will not dive into now. However, um, that's what it really reminds me of is something that was an advertisement supposed to go um, you know, locally and then it ended up going regionally and then nationally. That actor will actually get paid more and more and more. And that's kind of what I think you're trying to- It's exactly that. Um, <clears throat> and the way that it will then translate into other- things is on that contract you've, you've got the, the the fact that you earn something from it but also you have a reason to add value consistently you have a reason to be like stay strong to your ideals mm. to have integrity because actually the value of your asset will then crash if you break that and yeah. therefore you are you're at the moment you're really motivated by what happens if you sell it you're done but now you're actually motivated to make sure you maintain a great relationship which is which is the best way of building out a community and, and sort of nurturing that and in turn building out a brand and so there's there's so many cool ways that this is going to be just going to be innovated on for for almost every single part of commerce it doesn't matter whether you're buying a house you're selling a t-shirt you're selling a collectible or you're uh, you're creating art it's just all going to be ripped up in a really interesting way with this new technology yeah i think our brands um in the audience are excited i have a few questions coming in around um how does that play a role before we dive into that okay Metaverse. I think that <laughs> is another concept out here. How does this play a part? Related and not related. There's like VR, which is God, there's a lot as well in this, but um, why don't you unpack that for us? A uh, so, so Metaverse is, uh, isn't related to the blockchain. Um, if you see what I mean, it, it, and, and to kind of like crypto and, and what that means, it is just the concept of living through the internet. And it was you know, originated in some, some of the sort of nerdy sci-fi books of the 80s and yeah. people were talking about these getting like locked into like rigs and just going and exploring this world. And, um, and, and it's, they were very prescient in terms of what VR has become. Um, but actually we do kind of live a lot of our life through the internet. We are currently, you, you previously would have all these people in a room right now, but actually we're able to talk to loads of people at once through the internet. You're living this through your screens. You may not have a VR set on, in but you're able to do it. countries right now yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, and all, all over the shop. And, yeah. and then what this means it is just an amazing ability. So we do that online. We do that through social channels. We already kind of have a metaverse, um, um, but it's now evolving. People are playing around with different ideas of it um, where you start living through it. Obviously, Facebook rebranded as Meta. Yes. They have some big, big plays in this space, particularly, you know, they obviously bought Oculus Rift and, um, and but they're, they're going to expand that out so that we can kind of live and socialize more digitally. And, and who knows where that's going to end up. But what then becomes interesting in this from a brand's perspective is because we talked about that token, you can have an asset that you have proven to own just like an item you can have a look and a feel that will work within that metaverse. And probably one of the most realized versions of this vision is uh, computer games. So games like Fortnite, real massively multiplayer games, tons of people coming. If you, if anyone has any teenage <laughs> like kids or, 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 or like cousins or whatever, they'll know what it's like. These, these kids just live their life and it is just fluid, whether they're on the real world or whether they're, they're hooked into their PlayStation. Yeah. And they are already spending a lot of money on skins so they can look different and they can look unique in, in their game, in their gaming world. Yeah, exactly. And so what that means is that they're able to then um, 
basically uh, like they've got a currency there they're paying it's, it's actually centralized in in that case um but then the uh, ability for that to be tradables they can make a hustle on it there's maybe a limited release number of ones that they can then speculate in the movement and that's where that has, has, has evolved into and that's just one example and so you can and there's lots of brands who've done sort of products in there so you can have skins or movie releases you have specific skins in there and like so now VIP you VIP access in here and exclusivity oh well that's yeah that's another that's a whole nother piece to actually unpack <laughs> there but but yeah you you could have that well Yes, I mean, just from a visual perspective, a brand can sell an item in the real world and they can also sell an item in the digital world and we could wear it in the digital world, which is the way that the metaverse sort of vision lo looks like for that. Okay. However, when it comes to that access, it could also mean something else. It could mean that you can get access to a particular room or a particular community or a VIP squad or area like that maybe in a metaverse but more likely it's already happening now in forums in communities in telegram groups where you can actually buy a token and that token gives you access to a community and that community has a value to you mm. um or to a certain number of people which means that it can be then traded or not if it doesn't have any value so like if i were to buy um, a ticket to an event that i was interested in the topic right now and then i could trade that if someone else wants to buy it you know like scalpers outside of games and then you, they've got these last tickets and then you buy from them and then they get a higher price from someone else and then you can kind of access it that way yeah it's exactly that um and i think that one of my favorite projects in this space is um is the gary v project i mean he's mm. a bit of a binary kind of character pretty annoying but like what he what he released was a whole bunch of really lame doodles but um like on nfts but they baked in these amazing smart contracts that have access which means that he is a creator as a as an influencer as a figurehead um he was able to monetize his own audience and sell things like you know you could buy a token that gave you the ability to play tennis with him um, right and okay. I, I can't remember the exact of, of each one because they were like there were hundreds of them but there was one you could hang out you could play games with them and i think that the token may have had like you could have a little tab on it so you could you'd have two you could play twice i know for example the most common one that they had was access to a conference he was organizing mm. and you would buy that but you were actually buying three tickets to three the three conferences over the next three years you're mm. speculating that that conference first conference that has never happened before is going to be good enough the other you would want to go second year and the third year for all value uh, exactly or you just want to go yourself right. or maybe you go the first time and you think that was ace but actually loads of other people want to go and i can sell this off and i can even make money and go to the conference or yeah. or not so you're able to take a risk you're able to see what this means um and you know you can then trade it i'll I actually only want to do that once and then i can sell it to someone else and maybe maybe it's so good that i'll make money and i won't have to pay for it or maybe i won't maybe i'll lose money but you you have this ability to trade and to understand it and for i think for an older generation mm. um i think you know kind of millennials and upwards on that that sort of side of things you tend to own a number of large assets and the only thing you will trade is secondhand it like to that extent your house in your car but if you're a gen z right now and you, you talk to any kid playing Fortnite, they know about like the value of skins but probably when you look at from a brand perspective any 19 year old will you know they'll they'll buy an outfit for a night out and they know that okay i'll wear this once i'm gonna look on point but i'm then also for 100 quid or whatever it is but then i'm gonna sell it for yeah. best part of 80 so actually to them the value of that is 20 quid and i think most people who aren't of that generation will be able to watch 100 pound outfit but they were like actually the, the 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 cost of that to me was only 20 pounds and then someone else is like well i'll bet second hand and i'll look great and then i'll sell it for 60 or whatever it is and yeah. so this mindset is is already happening like in the it's in the physical world of thinking of everything exactly exactly yeah. so brands and actually how they need to adapt is to know that this is the way that people are thinking and actually how are they going to be in this world how are they going to be able to enable these people to trade secondhand it's far more sustainable enable these behaviors that people are doing in loads of different ways i think that's where our questions a couple have come through if you are a brand out there what are the steps that you should take to kind of get ahead of the curve like right now what would your advice be to brands if they wanted to kind of play in this space start a community what would that look like um well <clears throat> it's quite hard so there's a, the, the 
a lot of the projects in the crypto world are sort of decentralized. Um, and so a brand by its nature, the brand that exists by its nature is a centralized thing. You know, a logo, it's owned, it's created. Those people are there. So it's quite hard to decentralize that. Mm. So a lot of brands are playing around in the area where they're like, well, what assets do we have that people might like? And so okay. you've got like luxury brands that are doing limited drops of just you know, their logo or, or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter because, you know, when you buy a you know, thousand dollar t-shirt that says Prada or whatever on it, you're not really bothered about the t-shirt, you know, as much about the logo, you know, it's not about the utility of the product that, that goes it's into a stamp it. of value. It's a stamp of value. It's a stamp yeah. that I can afford this, yeah. um, which is, you know, why so many people have monkeys as their heads because they cost yeah. millions of dollars. So by saying I have a monkey as my, my, um, my profile picture, I've got millions of dollars. Right. Um, and so <laughs> that's what people are saying. Um, but the, uh, for, from a brand perspective, the, the kind of, drops that people are doing lots of brands are experimenting with sort of limited edition more like the art model that we were talking about yeah. i can only have a, a small number of them um but you've also got quite a few who are uh, maybe doing collectibles they have like a utility to it um that um that you know if they're a brand that has some kind of collectibles into it as well like like all of those ones are way into it sports and sort of shots and top shots and everything like that where people are are selling a, a short video of a sports game and someone can buy that and own that that goal or whatever it is yeah so so that's happening and then you've got i think it's very hard for most brands to do this mm. unless so if you are a supreme or the hundreds we have like avid fans and you do limited edition project product drops already yeah and your community is avid and they will buy it mainly they'll buy it because they want to be the one that's got the limited drop but also because they know they can sell that instantly right they're um, already in that space in the real world so it's just transferring it into the digital exactly so if you're one of those modern brands that are just like are oh, of that nature like courtiers or whatever it is that, yeah. that they do then it's super easy for you to do a digital drop because you know that the community know that they can sell it and so they'll speculate and they'll buy it and it sounds cool and they'll use it or they won't or whatever it is that 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 area is fine if you're luxury it works if you're not, it's not that easy because actually why, you know, why would someone, I know Boohoo just did a drop and people, everyone's piling into everything, right? So, mm. so they've actually in time, the real value will sort of cut, will shine through for a lot of these things. But why would you buy that from a brand like that? Or why would you buy a brand for, from a brand that doesn't have a passionate resale community and things like that? So it's quite hard for you to think about that. But what's really interesting for, for a lot of like, those kind of brands is to think, beyond where we are right now which yeah. is like hypey i must get whatever limited edition drop of a token that's only got a thousand yeah. and i must buy it <laughs> and i must stay up all night on a disco community you know it's like drinking from a fire hose and people are getting stressed they're like losing their jobs oh, i've got to be there like um it's really hard to stay up to date um but actually i think that will bed down this is my belief anyway is that that will bed the down hype. The, hype. the hype the hype train will chill and it will become normal and it's that smart contract. Mm. It will be the people that innovate on what is a, you are able to do with their tokens um, to actually to then to 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 actually create new experiences for their customers for their communities. Like so, one of the most yeah. obvious ones for that is if you think VIP clubs. At the moment, loyalty clubs exist, right? So you get a currency. In fact, you get a digital currency already. And if I earn the right to get to the highest tier or whatever, that gives me some sort of benefits. Maybe I get early, early product access. Maybe I get early access to the sale. Maybe I get to go to an event or an experience or have a one-to-one -one with a founder. All these amazing value-add experiences that a brand adds to their super fans, that can then be monetized. Because if I earn the right to get that through buying more product or advocating or whatever it is that gets me to that point, then I can speculate that other people speculate actually i think that i'd quite like to have that vip club and i'll give you a thousand quid for it because i think yeah. i want to get that discount i'll buy some products i may want to be there and that's just amazing for me a but bit also of FOMO. bit of fomo <laughs> but i also might want to um i might want to then trade that on yeah I might be like i'll go in there i'll buy a few things and then i'll sell that for 1500 and so then then brands will be able to look at who their brands are how they work with their communities and then monetize those communities in interesting ways do you see brands transitioning from physical space into this space from like any products that could be sold with an NFT in it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think it's already been done. I think Rolex is doing it. And again, that high end luxury space, it's pretty easy to do this. Yeah. Also, you know, that with a, a with an asset like a Rolex, 
you know that you can sell that for a certain price. And that so that has money. a value. Exactly. Yeah. They have limited edition ones. Some mm. are more desirable than others. So um, yeah, absolutely that's happening. But, you know, I anticipate, you know, you'll probably be able to get a digital version of any item that you buy. Um, it once there is a way that you can really start using it and wearing it in this metaverse, if, if that becomes a thing like that, that's one way that people look at it. Um, but I think really it, because now in 2022, the, experience of a brand a brand is really a community you know it's no longer who's got the you know best creative agency you can buy the biggest ads and the tv spot at the biggest time it is the grassroots kind of it's already community driven it's Both already crowd yeah. sourced um they are already this is the way that brands are being built today like those ones that i mentioned that's bream and those drops and that style is already happening with brands yeah. it's just not happening in the digital world that is now evolving and now brands who are working with their, their community more effectively those ones who own a deep relationship with them are able to then sort of like crack that open and be like well what else can i do for you what is the remarkable experience that i can drive for you as a fan as an advocate as a customer and then actually how do i reward you maybe i can reward you with a token i can reward you yeah. with some currency i can reward you with, with a with a token which is actually access to an event but you also get a free t-shirt when you're there and all of these things are possible with a smart contract. So we're just at the beginning of, at the moment, it's hypey, drop, oh, can I get in? Another, And actually, once that beds down, then it gets actually really exciting for brands because you're like, how do I bake this into my commerce experience? How do I make money from this in a different, innovative way that actually takes advantage of my community of passionate customers? And I think gives them that, like, gives them that a different experience, gives them a you know, something new that they've not been to before. And if you've already got that trust with your community, they, they could follow you into that space. Absolutely. Yeah. What we've got a great question here from our audience. What are the biggest threats to brands, uh, in the web 3.0 space? Ooh. Um, I think I know what it's not. I think that's not missing out. Uh, I think there's probably yeah. a lot of FOMO going on and, and it, probably most people on this are going, oh, Jesus, am I missing out on a huge opportunity? Am I late, like, am I late to the table? <laughs> from, from the majority of brands, it's probably not the right thing for you in many ways um, because unless you're, you you have that passionate community that already do product, product drops, if you like that, then you should absolutely be there. But mm -hmm. most brands aren't. Most brands just sell and they create, create experiences through their products. Um, so I know it's not that. I think that the, the opportunity rather than the kind of the, the, the other side of it is just to, to, to nurture the community outside of Web3, yeah. just to continue to, because Web3 isn't really here at ubiquitously. Web2 is. We already have countless social media channels that we want to be on. We've got tons of different ways that we can build a relationship with our customers that, mm -hmm. that was never previously possible until direct consumer and social and CRM, things like e -commerce. that. E-commerce. E-commerce. And so you now own that customer, you own that relationship. So um, building them, nurturing them across the channels, doesn't matter whether they're on the hype next thing, which is TikTok or whether they're on your Instagram following or whether they're in your CRM. As long as you are working to, to turn them from customers into fans of the brand, and then they in turn will become advocates for what you do, then they're going to be um, they're going to be there. So when a Web3 platform becomes big, or maybe the next social media, the next TikTok is going to be a Web3 enabled version of social, whatever it is, no one knows what that looks like until it happens. Yeah, You won't have to be like, oh my God, I've got to get on it. I've got to get on it. Because you already have a passionate community of fans who are already on it and you just have to follow them. So mm -hmm. just be like, go back to the basics work on the first principles of, of community building, creating remarkable experiences and building relationships. Yeah, building relationships first and foremost. Um, okay, great. I've got um, one more here. <laughs> Our audience can tell we're excited <laughs> about this space, which is great. And what possibilities does this open up? I think we answered this a few, a few times, but maybe Paul, just to wrap up, if there was like, one thing that you could say like this is what i'm most pumped about in this space as we work with so many brands and seeing what this can turn into is there something that you could kind of like nail that down to um i'm really i'm really psyched about uh the idea of brand currencies and a mm. brand wallet so at the moment you have like web3 wallets you know i'll have one on metamask on ethereum which will hold my tokens and and sort of assets in that way now what does that look like for a brand and now what if a brand had its own wallet and you every time you got a reward every time you got maybe a discount code every time you had some cash back or something like that it was held in this one wallet like space where you could hold those assets 
And then you can then trade them with other people, maybe just other customers and be like, I've actually got the really unique product that everyone else wants. Um, do you want it? And there's a value for that. Well, maybe it has to go onto the blockchain and then gets traded out in those kind of ways. I'm super excited about where brands are going to innovate in that space. And we're working on a project with it with quite a few brands um, doing it about how do we build a web wallet, a, a yeah. brand wallet and how yeah. does that work? So if anyone is brand is interested in that or experimenting and then, 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 please get in touch um, because yeah. we just, we want innovative brand builders who are willing to take the plunge because it's always going to be an experiment in this mm -hmm. space. It's such a new field, um, but being in there early and playing around with it, the, the best piece of advice I can give to anyone is to get stuck in and start just playing around, create a wallet, read up on it, buy a few things, sell a few things, understand it. as soon as you do that, it will suddenly make so much more sense. And then you can then start thinking, well, how does this apply to my brand? Demystified. Hopefully so. <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. My email was in the invite. So if you have any further questions for Paul, um, please feel free to reach out and look forward to the next All Aboard the Hype Train. If there's a specific topic that you want to um, hear <coughs> us TikTok. hype up, we've had TikTok out there a little bit. It's a lot of, lot, of hype. <laughs> <laughs> lot of hype going on. Just send those through to us because we want to talk about what you guys want to talk about and we can't wait to hear what's next. Sweet. Thanks, all. Thank you, Paul. Cheers. <laughs>